Hi, welcome everyone. I want to speak about something which many Jews do not know about, and that is the month before Rosh Hashanah. The last month of the Jewish New Year is the month of Elul. We find ourselves now in the midst of Elul. Uh, many Jews, vast majority of Jews know about Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, but do not know, many Jews do not know about the special opportunities which lie in the month that we are in its midst right now, the last month of the Jewish year, the month of Elul. That's what I wanted to speak about. But first, a few words on Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is known as the Jewish New Year, and we all know around the world, at a New Year, people celebrate, people gather together with friends, family, and eat and drink and party. Rosh Hashanah, we do the same. On the Jewish New Year, we're also supposed to feast. We're supposed to uh, thank God for giving us another year. We make a special blessing called Shechiyonu Vikimonu Vikimonu Zmanazet. We bless God for giving us another year. But it's much more than that. It's much more than just celebrating a new year. And that's what I want to speak about shortly. And then the special month we are in before Rosh Hashanah. So Rosh Hashanah is also known as the day of awe. Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are known as the days of awe, Yamim Noraim, the days of judgment. When God Almighty, the creator of the universe, judges every human being what will be with us this year. Rosh Hashanah, our fate is written. And Yom Kippur, it's sealed. We hope and pray that we all are written in the book of life. Good health, livelihood, parnasa, prosperity, happiness. The good news is that the judge is our father. Avinu Malkeinu, our father, our king. Bonim Atem Lashem Alakechem the Torah says, You are children to Hashem your God. And so that's a lot of encouragement. But we gotta show up, we gotta prepare. Everyone knows, God forbid, if someone has a court date, you don't just show up, you don't just say, Hi, I'm here. You you prepare. And this is a little bit what Elul is about. <laughs> the great Ari. The great Kabbalist, one of the greatest Kabbalists that ever lived, the Arizal wrote that, actually he didn't write, he would, uh, he would speak and his students wrote, but he taught that in this month of Elul, the 13 attributes of divine mercy, the 13 d- divine attributes of mercy, compassion, forgiveness, shine this month, which is very, very special. The Alter Rebbe, the founder of Chabad, actually questions why it's such a holy, such holy, sublime, divine energies that are shining in this time. Why isn't it not a holiday? It's just a regular month. And he gives an example to this of a Melech Basada, a king that's in the field. Usually the king is in his palace, is in his chamber, where it's very difficult to gain access and speak to the king. You have to be a special, dignified person. You have to make an appointment. Not everyone is allowed. It's very difficult. However, there's a time when the king is in the field, and then the king is totally accessible. When the king goes on a trip, for instance, and then when he's returning from his trip, in the days of old, there were no planes, and he would go by his, with his royal carriage, and he would pass by many villages and fields and, and farms and where the simple folk were. And that is the time where every person has the opportunity to go approach the king and ask him what, what we need, what the person needs. This is the month of El. God Almighty is very approachable. What is demanded from us is that we have to actually go go greet the king, right? A person that's not so wise will say, you know what, I'm so busy. I have my potatoes to harvest. I got to collect the eggs from the chickens. 
I, I don't have time to see the king. A wise person is not going to say that. A wise person will understand, I have uh, this special opportunity to go see the king, greet the king, and ask him for what we need here in our village, and he could help us, right? God Almighty is the king of the entire universe. And so what we have to do is actually stop what we're doing and go greet the king. What does that mean in the spiritual sense? So it's explained in Hasidus, it is to, to recognize deeper that God Almighty is our king. What does that mean? That he has decrees, he has commandments, and we have to follow his commandments, the mitzvahs. This is true for every Jew, observant or not observant. Because what God Almighty wants from us, all of us equally, from the rabbis to the laymen, from the most observant to the least observant, is effort. Effort to improve. And this is really the special time to improve. To prepare for the new year. To prepare for the days of judgment. And so this is the time when we have to awaken this ability that every Jew has to recognize that God Almighty is our King. And we have to take Him more seriously. There's another point. Now first, what do you mean taking more seriously? Everyone at their level. If someone is not careful with daily tefillin, make sure not to miss a day of tefillin. Prayer every day. Prayer doesn't have to be hours, it could be minutes. You don't speak Hebrew, you could pray in your own language. Study Torah. Some of us are very knowledgeable in so many fields, but unfortunately, in our own field, in our own tradition, in our own past, in our own history, some of us have very little knowledge. We owe it to ourselves, to our children and grandchildren, to know more of what it means to be a Jew. Study more Torah. Charity. Give help those that are less fortunate. Give help to strengthen activities of Jewish outreach, of Jewish teachings, to strengthen the Jewish people. Or, it doesn't always have to be money. You could invite a guest for Shabbos. You could teach another Jew, inspire another Jew about Judaism. That is a great, great favor you're doing to his or her soul. It doesn't have to be only physical charity. It could also be spiritual charity. But we have to improve in these areas. I want to conclude with a very special insight from our Rebbe, from our Rebbe, in his discourse about the king in the field. And he says like this, Daldal Terebe describes, and I actually did not do it yet, I did not read it to you, at least, you know, verbatim translation. A king, before he enters the city, the people of the city go greet him. And they greet him in the, in the field. And then, whoever wants to go greet him is able to go see him and greet him. And he accepts everyone with a smile and a cheerful face, a cheerful countenance. But once he goes back to his capital, he goes into his, into his palace, then you, you need special permission to enter. So for us to be able to enter, for us to be able to be in, so to speak, with God Almighty, our Shashariim Kippur, we have to prepare ourselves in El, in this month, to do tshuva, to be closer to God, to do more of Torah mitzvahs. That is how we become a, so to speak, uh, high upstanding citizen and important citizen to be able to go in to the palace and see the king then. That's the time of Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Back to the Rebbe's amazing insight in this parable of the Alter Rebbe. 
The Alter Rebbe, the, the founder of Chabad, gives this parable of the king of the field, and the Rebbe adds a detail. He says that the Alter Rebbe writes that the king accepts everyone with a smile. He was just able to see, he accepts them. He was able to write, to say, he accepts them with a smile. Why? Does he welcome all of them? Who's that all? Who are we trying to include? He says like this. He say what he means to say is including a person that wants to improve. He wants to go greet the king, which we explain that means he he want he wants to acknowledge deeper that God Almighty is my king and I have to listen to him. And therefore, I want to keep Judaism a little stronger, a little better. And he really wants to, but he is so caught up with his old habits that it does not come into fruition. He, it does not come into implementation. He doesn't implement it. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to miss a day of tefillin. And then suddenly, days go by without tefillin. Or I'm going to keep Shabbos better. Suddenly, you know, uh, he, he doesn't, he doesn't come through. Or I'm gonna take steps and keep in kosher. Step A and step B. And then it does not come through. And he feels bad about it. Ah, it's not, it's not, you know, it's, uh, well, why should I even try? And he said, no. The fact that you are willing to improve, you are willing to be a better person, you are willing to be a better Jew, you are willing to do tshuva, you are willing to return to God Almighty and to take upon yourself God Almighty as your king. That also God Almighty appreciates immensely and he smiles to us, so to speak. Meaning he derives pleasure from this will, sincere will of a Jew that wants to come closer to him. This Pleasure that God Almighty has brings out even a deeper will by the person that's struggling to implement his good wishes and his good resolutions. And through this deeper will, we overcome our obstacles and actually start living as a better Jew. I hope you understood that. Let me repeat it. There are people that want to improve. They want to be better people. They want to be better Jews. And they take upon themselves resolutions. But unfortunately, so our Yetzir Hara, our evil inclination that tries to pull us down, does not let us implement our good intentions. And we feel dejected because we could feel, you know, give, like giving up. Do not give up. God Almighty appreciates that good intention and he brings him much pleasure. And because of that, that pleasure from God, God accepts that, brings from, brings out from within the Jew even a deeper will, a stronger will to do tshuva, to return to God Almighty. And that helps us overcome our obstacles and we actually improve in actuality, to come closer to Hashem, to come closer to the Torah and the mitzvahs. And Hashem gives us all a good and sweet and happy, healthy year.